Hey guys, Andrew here from The Bros to give you my impressions of the co-op mode for the recently released puzzler World of Goo 2. We're not doing a full review for this one, I've spent about 4 hours with the title and finished about 30% of the story, so we don't want to slap on the full review label, but wanted to just give you my thoughts on my time with it. A big reason I decided to do this is because you might be like me in that I had no idea that World of Goo 2 even had a local co-op mode for up to 4 players. I think that's for a couple of reasons. For one, the title is only available on the Switch and PC, and the co-op mode is exclusive to Switch players. But also because they barely advertise this feature in the lead up to launch, I found around 4 or 5 trailers for World of Goo 2. Here's how much of the co-op they showed between all of those trailers. Plus, exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version, you can build with up to 3 buds in local co-op play. So yeah, it's almost like they were hiding this feature from us and your boy had to do some hardcore investigative journalism to find out why. Because here's the thing, World of Goo 2 is what you want it to be if way back in 2008, yes that's right, 16 years ago, you happen to play World of Goo, you've got a competent sequel here in World of Goo 2. It's got an 82 on Open Critic, lots of 8s, even some 9s from reviewers, but no one, and I mean no one, talked about how this played in co-op. So that's where we, the co-op bros, will come in and do it justice. Again, this is an impression, so it'll be a little bit more laid back than our usual reviews, it's gonna mean longer clips from the game, and don't expect Gabe and I's usual hype banner in between the sections. I played this with my friend Zach on the couch, shout out to him, he kept me going through all of this, but that's enough preamble, let's talk about World of Goo 2's co-op. Okay, straight off the rip, I'll remind you that this is a 1-4 player co-op mode exclusive for the Switch. The game recognized that there were two players from the moment we turned it on. We didn't even have to go into a menu to set anything up, I really like that. The co-op mode is not a separate part of the game, you play through the whole campaign, but now with just two or more players instead of one. However, there is one key difference from player one to the second, third, and fourth players, in that the first player controls the camera. This is important, and it's going to come back up later because the camera can be a little bit tough to keep focused since you're limited with motion controls and it makes for a less than ideal environment occasionally for the other players. Of course, you only want one person to control the camera because otherwise it would be crazy, but it still doesn't totally work. For example, if I was about to place a piece of goo on an environment and Zach twitches controller to the side, I'd drop that goo and lose it permanently. More often than not, this is where if I did have audio with our clips, I'd play a highlight reel of Zach saying sorry for that happening several times. This is not a diss at Zach here. He was better at this than me. It just happened pretty often. Before we get too far into my impressions, which I'm kind of doing already, let's talk about what exactly World of Goo 2 is. Put simply, we're playing a physics-based puzzle title where you have to create structures using goo to transport goo from a starting point to a pipe. There's often a lot that happens in between that, of course, like different goo types, different environmental hazards, different levels of difficulty and finesse required. As I mentioned, this is all done through motion control, so you're really just pointing your controller at the screen, clicking a button to grab and place goo, and that's actually it. You can zoom in to get a slightly better look at things and go back in time by finding this little white bug if you make a mistake. Every level has extra challenges where you can try and get the maximum amount of goo possible or the fastest time possible. We never really accomplished that. The game consists of five chapters and should take around eight-ish hours if I had to guess. A nice length for a little indie puzzler. Okay, that's all fine and good, but we do need to start getting into my impressions because my tone and a couple of quips have probably hinted that I wasn't exactly thrilled by this experience. I'd say it's okay, not bad, but also not something I can glowingly recommend. Here's the thing, World of Goo 2 was surprisingly difficult. I don't know if my brain just skipped physics class in high school, but two adult men sat on the couch and struggled through a couple of these early levels. That's in part due to the controls. It's been a minute since I played a title that forced you to stick to motion controls, and let me just say, I'm glad it's been a minute. Maybe this works in single player, but in co-op, it can be a little rough. As I already talked about, it's hard to control the camera so that you're not messing up your co-op partners, and when you pair that with surprisingly difficult puzzles, it makes for an often frustrating time. I struggled to see how this could be fun at all with up to four people, but 
with two people, we did have fun despite those frustrations. We sat down to play this for about two hours, but totally lost track of time and made it through four hours. When we did overcome the challenge and find ourselves making those perfect placements of our goo to get something just right, it was very satisfying. This really simple bridge level took us like half an hour. On multiple occasions, I was out of my seat, losing my mind by not being able to get just the right placement or the tower falling when I didn't expect it to. But then we did solve it, and I was also out of my seat losing it because I was so hyped that we had pulled it off. We did have fun playing this on the couch together, but we also played through several levels where it just felt too punishing to properly play it in co-op. It wasn't because the puzzles were too difficult, it was just sometimes because we couldn't figure out the right placement and it was so finicky with those motion controls. We had intellectually solved the puzzle, but we weren't able to actually execute it. And that's just in chapter one and chapter two, I'd assume that there are more frustrating levels as the difficulty increases with each chapter. I wanna keep it grounded and say that only two or three of those levels in chapter one were really tough and at times frustrating. And you do have the option to skip but I don't think we should need to skip two levels to progress that early in. It brings me back to that four player scenario. I imagine the chaos with that many people would make this near unplayable. Don't get me wrong, chaos in co-op is a staple and can be a ton of fun on the couch. Games like Overcooked have perfected that formula, but you can also have that chaos and still sort of stumble your way to success without too much effort, without having to spend 30 plus minutes on a level. I don't see that happening in World of Goo 2. So my impressions are that the co-op can be fun, but it can also be equally frustrating. Which gets to the end here where I need to answer the question if this is for you and your best friends. Maybe. If you and your friend know you like puzzle titles, then this could be for you. We all know that local co-op titles are growing thinner and thinner these days, so if you want to try something new, I think this could be worth a shot if you know you're going to like puzzlers. But if you know that motion controls or puzzlers are frustrating for you, it's definitely a skip. I almost feel like they made this title 16 years later, knowing that the returning audience would be 16 years older, because yeah, this was hard. I assumed going into this it would be a title for kids, given the art style and the premise. Kids love goo these days, I can't explain it, but I was dead wrong. Which is where it gets weird that this even has a four player co-op mode. Again, we didn't play this with four people, we played it with two, so it could actually work sometimes. But man, there's just no way this would work with up to four people. The game requires such precision and thoughtfulness that the chaos, it, it just sounds wild to me. If this was the mysterious case of why they sort of hid the co-op mode, made it exclusive for the Switch, I might have cracked it. I don't know if World of Goo 2 is intended to be played in co-op by most of its audience, but for people who dig it, who really like this title, who like puzzle games, who like physics-based games, it's certainly nice that this is an option. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. If we helped you determine if World of Goo 2 is for you and your best friend, let us know and consider subscribing for more. Special shout out to Zach. It's his first time playing a game with us for the channel, but hopefully not his last as he's one of my oldest friends. Also, of course, a special shout out to our patrons. We've had a few more recent subs that we're both very grateful for. Until next time, we'll catch you on another episode of The Co-op Rose.